Today, we will be discussing biopsy channels, what characteristics to look for in a good biopsy channel, and our recommendations for which channels work best for your repair needs. Now, to better understand biopsy channels and their uses, it is important to understand a little bit about the history of the channels and the reasoning behind its chemical makeup. In the early days of flexible endoscope development, biopsy channels were made up of a generic medical grade plastic tubing. But as endoscopes evolved, so did their parts and channels. In 1970, biopsy channels began being made up of a polytetrafluoroethylene, or PTFE for short. This chemical compound was used primarily because of the strong carbon-fluorine bond that made it inert to almost all acids, bases, and solvents. This bond offered superior protection for the biopsy instruments within and provided a sterile environment due to the electronegative nature of the fluorine in the compound. However, regular uses of this channel slowly revealed mechanical flaws and a propensity for kinks. To fix this issue, engineers replaced it with an expanded PTFE, which maintained the chemical advantages of its predecessor while also addressing its mechanical flaws. For a time, this new ePTFE channel worked effectively, but eventually led to new issues when these channels were exposed to decontaminating agents that removed the proteins that were embedded in the channel matrix. These proteins slowly ate away at the channel, thus leaving microscopic holes in the walls of the channel. OEM engineers then developed a much denser channel using higher density ePTFE that has now transitioned into the standard PTFE used today. So what makes a good biopsy channel? There are a few different factors to take into consideration when deciding which biopsy channel works best for your specific scope. The first factor is flexibility. For example, a 3.7 millimeter channel for colonoscopies needs to be able to bend 180 degrees in a radius of 25 millimeters. Different models require different levels of flexibility as well. Smaller models, for example, need to be able to bend up to 275 degrees in a 20 millimeter radius. The next factor is its kink resistance. The channel should not buckle while angulating so that the instruments can pass through it easily. The third factor to consider is its ease of insertion for the biopsy instrument. The inner surface of the channel should be slippery, smooth, and durable so that the biopsy instrument does not get snagged or stuck. The fourth factor to consider is the level of stiffness. The channel must be able to keep its round shape and accommodate the overall dimension through the whole insertion tube section of the scope. The fifth factor is its chemical and thermal resistances. The channel should not be seriously affected or degraded from alcohol, disinfectants, or other chemicals used in decontamination. The final factor to take into consideration is the ease of sealing to the fittings of the scope. Every type of channel has a different characteristics and each of these different factors plays a role and it's important to note which one works best for your particular repair needs. LASC offers an assortment of channel types, each coming in a variety of sizes, all of which are engineered to fit the specific scope model you are working on. To learn what type of channel best works for your specific needs, let's look further into the different types. Please note that the channel examples in this section are for 3.7 mm ID channels used in adult colonoscopes. Our first channel type is our clear PTFE Teflon with a 250 mm wire wrap. This is a conventional design that has been around for many years. It is the most durable type of channel, but is also very stiff and prone to kinking. The channel is made from solid PTFE Teflon, and there are different ways it can be constructed. In this particular case, it can be grooved in a machine around the OD of the channel. Then a wire, either flat or round, it can be laid in place. Then it is sealed with a floral urethane polymer coating, which stabilizes it so that it doesn't come out of its groove while still maintaining its smooth surface. It is constructed this way because it makes it the toughest and most inflexible channel available. It is primarily used in older, tougher, more rigid scopes, rather than newer scopes that are more flexible and delicate. To install this channel, the proximal end is mechanically bonded with a compression fitting and the distal end is flared either mechanically or with heat. It is then tetra etched and epoxies are applied on the biopsy channel fitting on the distal tip. The channel is then slid over the fitting 
and then it is tied down with a high strength line. Our second channel variant is our two layer 400 millimeter wire wrap channel. It is very similar to the flexibility of the OEM channel except it has a 400 millimeter wire wrap to prevent it from being deformed in the bending section and kinked behind the coil pipe mount. The channel is constructed this way because the extra long wire wrap goes past the kink problem area just behind the coil pipe mount up to the 30 centimeter mark on the insertion tube where most of the flexing occurs during procedures. The inner wall of this channel is made of a higher durometer PTFE to aid in gouging resistance and provide a smoother biopsy tool transition. The outer layer is made of a low density EPTFE layer which helps maintain the channel stability. Installing this channel is similar to the clear Teflon channel except instead of thermal flaring on the distal end we would recommend mechanical flaring for the biopsy channel. Our third type of channel is the three layer laminated biopsy channel without a wire wrap. This channel is made of an EPTFE core with a fluoropolymer wall and an EPTFE casing. This is a new iteration of an older design that was made of pure EPTFE which previously had been found to still have leakage issues. The reason this channel is designed this way is that engineers wanted to create the most flexible channel available on the market. It requires approximately a quarter the amount of force to angulate it in the bending section than its OEM counterpart, and it is still highly recommended by repair facilities all over the world for its ease of use and high level of flexibility. Installing this channel is the same as the two-layer channel where we recommend mechanical flaring as opposed to thermal flaring. Due to the nature of the three-layer laminated channel, we recommend pulling as opposed to pushing the channel. This is done by using a biopsy tool run through the new channel and insert it into the old channel while it is still in place within the scope. Then when pulling out the old channel, the new channel can follow it through the scope. Today we will be taking a deeper look into one of our 6.0 millimeter laminated three layer biopsy channels. This particular biopsy channel comes from a client who has put the channel through repeatedly heavy usage in a GIF XT Q160 scope for about eight months before finally needing a replacement. The replacement is not due to any leakage or kinking issues, but because after seven months of heavy usage, the channel itself has started to lose its shape, which becomes an issue for the instrument when inserted because the channel becomes oval shaped. When we remove the outer layer of the channel, we can see the intermediate layer, which is made up of a floral polymer layer that is used to seal the interior wall of the channel and enhance the impermeable nature of the channel itself. The inner layer of the channel is made up of a condensed EPTFE and needs to maintain a smooth surface underneath for the purposes of sliding the biopsy instrument in. After eight months of heavy usage, we can see the inner surface holding up well without any significant damages. Each type of channel has its strengths and weaknesses, and not every type of channel is exclusively meant for one maker model scope. In the hands of a trained technician, channels can be interchangeable and effective regardless of the make or model of the scope used. We do, however, have some basic recommendations for what we believe is the ideal make and model that our channels are best compatible with. The first clear Teflon channel is recommended for older scope models that are more robust in design ideally 140 or 160 models, and in some cases, 180 models are compatible as well. Our two-layer channels are ideally recommended for 180 model scopes and can be used across earlier model scopes as well if the technician is well trained. Our three-layer laminated channel is recommended for newer 190 model scopes purely for the flexibility required in newer scope models. Some can also be used in 180 models as well, given the advanced skill level on part of the technician. Of course, all of these recommendations are dependent upon specific circumstances and technician preferences. There are always examples of technicians or doctors who prefer one level of stiffness or flexibility over another and can either make adjustments as necessary or stick to their predilections on what can and cannot be used. Given the characteristics of each type of channel and the benefits each one has, we recommend exploring different options and finding out what works best for your specific needs. Please feel free to call us at 626-671-5278 
if you have any questions in selecting and installing these biopsy channels. We at LASC think of ourselves as an extension of your own repairing department in a supporting role to provide any sort of required assistance for your technical staff. Through understanding technician requirements, we can help provide support for your daily repairs. Whether it's through providing technical support, ranging from scope diagnosis and sharing repairing techniques and procedures from our team of ex-technicians to our assortment of OEM equivalent aftermarket parts. Everything we do here at LASC is with the intention of helping make repairs easier for technicians by understanding their problems and coming up with solutions to make their repairs more efficient. We provide insights from ex-technicians and manufacturing engineers as well as crowdsourcing information from our network of other technicians in the field. We look forward to helping you with your next repair. Call today to learn more.